Don't touch me. I hate this town. Prepare the boat. We sail immediately. What about the kid? It's not coming with us. And who in this hellhole will take in a half-breed? Saharam. Take it to Saharam in Lobenden. And make sure to tell him it's Morrill's child. The assassin had had his day. Very true. He'd kidnapped Triss Marigold. It seemed like Foltis' life had not been enough. It seemed like the killer also wanted the monarch's former advisor. There was no time to think. It was time to act. Grabbing Geralt, I embarked on a voyage upriver, deeper into the Pontar Valley. There, in a region known as Lormark, King Henseld of Kedwen had made camp with his army. King is the key word here denoting the central figure in my plan to capture the Kingslayer. The special forces of King made the soil light lightly upon him. Foltest had lost some of their customary enthusiasm, treating us to not one single joke of the how many ways can you skin an elf variety. Which only goes to support my theory that the human mind is capable of producing a finite amount of horror before some manner of reflection springs itself upon it. It's been a massacre! Bones everywhere! How in the world did Cleversig harness so much of the power? Do you always get so excited at the sight of skulls, Death Mode? <laughs> Scoff all you want, I speak of magic! The kind of spells that win wars, thousands incinerated in seconds! <laughs> power, destruction, annihilation! Yes, after which Sabrina Cleversig was burned at the stake. And the Pontar Valley remains within Edern's borders. Edern is a carcass. Still showing life signs, but the realm's days are numbered. No peasant revolt can change that. You're wrong, Deathmold. This country lives. I can feel it. Like an old wounded bear covered in scars, hounds all round it. But still strong. Still deadly. This will be a good war. But sire, the Edernian barons won't dare stand against you. You shall see that shortly. I've prepared everything. To Tanzerville, can you feel them? Magic still beats strongly in this place. Shivers run down my spine. Mm. Strange. Cleversig's quadruple sun is a short duration spell. It should have dissipated long ago. An anomaly, perhaps? Not uncommon. The sheer amount of power she summoned? I doubt she retained complete control. Stop discussing Sabrina Glebesik, or I promise you that heads will roll. Baron Fellat has forever hinted Long that he would gladly change his Chadwen. chance. Fellat is unparalleled unforever. scum. The other nobles are panic-stricken at the very thought of Saskia with her peasant and non-human rebels. They are unprepared to fight and know it very well. And Demovin's cob? Has he named his price? Prince Stennis has yet to respond, but Fellat has assured. I must see him. Look into his eyes. I'll know what he's made of then. We most humbly greet His Majesty Henselt, King of Kedwin, heir to the dynasty of the Unicorn, Lord of Ard Kareg, Archduke of Barnard, and Vanquisher of Nilfgaard. Welcome to Edern. How much do you want? Your Majesty surely jests. I couldn't be more serious. How much for your signatures? A hundred thousand Novigrad crowns, we thought. To each of us. And the titles of Marquis. Ooh. We speak of Upper Eden. 
of coal and silver mines, numerous factories, the sole white marble quarry this side of the Yuruga and the North's main east-west trade route. We speak of law, Mark. I advise you to adopt the new nomenclature. In exchange, we shall swear fealty and acknowledge your majesty as sovereign of these lands. I shall give you naught for your worthless signatures. I have no need of them. But your majesty, without our support, you'll forever be the invader, the occupying force, the enemy. The folk of Eden... The folk of Eden follow Saskia the Dragon Slayer and Prince Stennis. I wish to speak to them. Sire, the Dragon Slayer approaches, white flag in hand. Excellent. Let her pass. Just out of curiosity, what does Upper Eden sell for these days? How much do you demand, lass? King, command your vulture to shut his beak before I thrust his cockerel up his arse and twist so hard he'll crow until noon reverts to morning. I... Sire, you must have her restrained. Shut up, Deathmold. I've rather taken a liking to this Saskiev. Say your peace, woman. King, withdraw your army, recognize Upper Eden's sovereignty and your persecution of non-humans, and give them leave to quit your realm. Do this, and save yourself and your army. <laughs> you have balls, woman, but what would I gain? My soldiers would call me a coward. I am Hensel de Vard Kareig. I'll not run from a woman, even if she be a dragon slayer. I see one other solution. You and I, King, here and now, before these folk and the gods, I challenge you. As in the old days, when the Honorable ruled this world, Upper Eden to the victor. The lass has gone mad to challenge a king. Sire, this is absurd. We shall crush them in battle. They say the lass has slain a dragon. She could be dangerous. I find you fetching, girl. And I want you alive. I want you and this country. You need to take Vergen first. Oh no, you, then Vergen, then the whole of Eden. Grab her! <laughs> in the name of Kreev, Freya, and Militele. Hey, Hogt! What's with you, Zivi? Booze made you batty. Don't you recognize me? I'll be plowed and damned. Why the hell did you bring him here, Roach? He's a witcher. I know who the horseman is. Plowing Kingslayer at the gate of a king's camp. Why, he's not even bound. Easy, lads. The witcher's no murderer. I'll vouch for that. As for kings, well, I desperately need to see yours. You're in for a wait then, Mr. Special Mission Knight. Don't move, mutant. 
One of you go get the sergeant, and while you're at it, fetch a solid piece of rope to bind the freak. Come on, Zivig, no need for that. Where'd you say the king was? Out in the field somewhere, negotiating. Hey, Kingslayer, drop your weapons, or do I need to pack a bolt up your ass? Don't move! Don't even twitch, mutant! Hands where I can see him! Shoot! Smash the freak! What the fuck? These spectres were my soldiers. It's Sabrina's cause. Edernians are here as well. My other sight's late. We have to go on. Endure, friends. I must focus enough power for the spell. Okay, no BT. How can you no BT check? Ooh, that big guy. Ooh, that big guy. Some enemies you can kill like that on hard mode. Some enemies, it's just like, what the fuck? Ready! Stay close to me! What the hell? Where did the sun go? It's an eclipse. Someone has to close. Spectres are only susceptible to silver and spells. I'll try to disperse the fog. Dissipating, we're near its end.
Death Mold, Sheeler, meet me in my tent. You're to explain what the hell happened there, and how we're to get rid of it. As you command, Your Majesty. I'll tolerate no delays on this matter, and summon all my company commanders. Immediately, Your Majesty. Corporal, I'd like you to watch the Witcher closely. He just pulled me from a magic hell, so I doubt he wants my head as he took fall tests. But I'll not have him wandering round the camp like some stray dog. Occupy him for a time, then bring him to my tent. Sire, I must request an audience. Later. I'll see my mages first, then the Witcher. Ah, just lovely. And here I'd hope for a calm little war. Nowhere I might wet my throat around here. Roach, willing to vouch for this overgrown urchin? He did not kill Foltest or Demavend, if that's what you're asking. You've got my assurance on that. Good enough for me. Let's go then. Our armorer. Busy as ever with military commissions, but he'll take a private commission from time to time. Ah, we're here at last. The canteen, the most important place in the camp. If you ever get bored, you should find a monster contract or two on the notice board. Here's where the king organizes tournaments. All glamour, ceremony, noses and cocks in the air. Between those, we kill time thrashing about with swords, pikes, chairs, the works. Good stuff. No holds barred. They pay well, too, if you know who to talk to and who to bet on. Excuse me a moment, Witcher. How did the fight go? He the nose for the Civic. He won again. My gold? You gonna bet on more fights today? Of course. I'll come by later. See him, Witcher. Loosen his bonds a bit, and he's liable to jump at your throat like a rabid mutt. One of your Biscoyatel. How did you capture him? Scouts found him wounded in the ravines. Someone massacred a small unit. The boy said it was a bloodbath, as if the Reaper just swung his scythe right through them. Whoever attacked them was very strong. Any idea who it might have been? No. But if they managed to ambush elves in the wild, I'd rather not meet them. Right, Civic. Let's go see the king. How's it going, lads? I can't feel me plowing feet from all this standing around. Any chance you'll be sending up some replacements? In an hour. Open up the gate. The king wants to see the Witcher. Ah, uh, yeah. Go straight to the royal tent. You can't miss it. I've a few things to take care of. Godspeed, Zivik. I'll be near the main gate if you need me. So long. Ha! A witcher! The king... What? Surprised to see a dwarf on human reach? Got a well-thought-out slur ready and witty. You won't surprise me. You're a little tense. Tense? <laughs> That's a good one. I, odd-looking human, am a prime mercenary. A sapper. I'm not tense by definition. A sapper? Not that kind of sapper. I build field fortifications and war machines. I can fucking throw a boat bridge across a river in half a day. Digging ditches is relaxing. That's what I meant. Hmm. Got any spare parts from those war machines? The decommissioned ones, of course. I need some to make monster traps. Sure. Why wouldn't I? If... Piss off out of here. You're talking to an elder. So show a little respect, you prick licker. Respect for you? This is no place for crappers like you. Out, I said. Aye, true. Join the pigs in the pen. That's your place. Best leave. Old Maverick ain't a good companion. Unless you're looking for someone to mock. What I saw back there, that happen often? What's the problem? I've bigger problems to deal with than the camp tramps. My nightmares have invaded my waking life. 
The specters haunt and hunt me by day. Come on. Nightmares are common. Start at the beginning. One night, I walked to the riverside and sat there, staring at the stars. I must have fallen asleep. I dreamt of my birdie, her milk-white bosom, her gentle voice. I saw and heard her as if she sat beside me, and then that voice became a terrifying whisper. Curdled the blood in my veins. I opened my eyes, but the specter remained. It went on talking, hovering over me, stretching its mitts out towards me. I felt a deathly chill, and then it happened. What? Never been a coward. At the fore and fierce in many battles. But a human's one thing. A specter's another. No other way to put this. I shit myself. Out of fear. Pants right full by the time I got back to camp. Since then, they mock me. Call me the Crapper. I didn't see anyone mocking you. Well, except for those two drunks. Then you haven't looked around well enough. I'm the laughing stock of the entire camp. Why did you go to the beach? During Hensel's last expedition, we stayed in a house there. My unit was on the lookout for Demavan's forces trying to cross the river. I just wanted to recall the old times. So you took part in the campaign three years ago? Took part? I barely escaped with my life. Leva, the brothel medic, saved me. Talk to her if you want to learn more. She knows everything about the camp. What time did the Spectre appear? I went to the beach after my watch. So it must have been an hour before midnight. I've no idea how long I slept, but when I reached the camp, it was dawning in the east. I'll deal with the Spectre, but you should know a Witcher's services don't come cheap. My soldier's pay is meager. Got but a few coins in my pouch and some pipeweed. Will you do it for that? All right. Yeah? You're the quartermaster's assistant? Yeah. Great. I want to see the best equipment you have. I've got the coin. The army stands to gain, not lose by me. I should think so. So? You sure you're the quartermaster's assistant? Yeah. I ask because assistants are usually pretty glib. I'm glib. No, you're not. My gal left me. How do you know? She wrote me a letter. Oh, wait a minute. Damn it. She can't write. Bastards. Beavers, not friends. I'll show them as soon as I get home. Snot nosed scribes. Counting barley all day. They get bored, look for diversions. I'll give them diversion. <clears throat> uh, many thanks. At first I thought, go away, Emo. But now I see you're a good fellow. So will you help me? I should think so. So? Nearly everyone hunts you, yet you live in spite of that. Impressive. I find it hard to wean myself off life. As do we all. However, in all my career as an ambassador of his imperial majesty, I have never met anyone quite as talented at survival as you. I took the liberty of checking some rumors about you. I'll say it again. Impressive. Are you seeking employment? I was unaware you fellows hired yourselves out for battle. My aim here is different. Really? Perhaps I can be of assistance. I saw you with full test before. Now you're with Hensel. No doubt you'll visit the King of Redania next. I need not go far. Radovid is en route to Loch Muin. Perhaps he has already arrived. We'll meet there. Loch Muin? An ancient elven city quite a ways away, near the source of the Pontar. Why there? The mages wish to re-establish their council. They sent out invitations to all the kings. Foltest was a good king. Shame he ended that way. I've already conveyed the Emperor's condolences to Constable Metallus. Since we're talking about Teneria, 
and Faltest. Apparently the Fallen King's advisor, the sorceress Triss Merigold, has disappeared in mysterious circumstances. Rumors abound. Do you know anything about her? Why do you ask, Excellency? I heard the two of you are. Mages have a natural tendency to disappear into thin air once in a while. Why is anyone concerned? Maybe they wonder if witches locked in dungeons possess the same capacity. You're avoiding the subject, which means it's uncomfortable for you. Have it your way, I shan't press. But I'll ask one more question, if I may. Of course, Your Excellency. I mentioned Triss because, I must admit, I am perturbed. Mages are known for their mutual envy and rivalry. I wonder if there's any matter that could unite them. Perhaps you could be a bit clearer, Excellency. Then I shall ask directly. Do you know anything about Merigold's involvement with an organization of sorceresses? Assuming, of course, that you are, theoretically, or have been, close. Maybe she's involved, maybe she's not. Triss has her friends, and I have mine. Undoubtedly. Wandering poets, dwarves with terrorist contacts, and special forces agents. It's certainly true you diplomats are experts at gathering information. How else would we negotiate effectively? Learning all there is to learn about other countries is a necessity. Nevertheless, I thank you for your information. Is there anything else? Why are you so interested in this organization of sorceresses? I wonder about some strange coincidences. I'm told several of them were seen in the vicinity when the assassination attempts occurred. What's so suspicious about that? Mages have always thronged around monarchs, the source of power and coin. I'm not accusing anyone. I merely said it makes me wonder. What's the Emperor's envoy doing here? Satisfy my curiosity. The last unfortunate conflict left the Northern Kingdoms in pitiful economic condition. His Imperial Majesty desires stability. We wish to offer financial assistance, so I'm visiting those lands hardest hit by the war. Henselt is coping admirably as far as I can see. The details of my visit here are reserved for the Emperor and the Kedweni King. You sure they're that big a secret? I mean, they could be important to me. I can reveal one thing. The Emperor was very moved to hear the White Wolf had returned. He asked me to investigate the matter personally and submit a report. Why do I interest him? He didn't say. His Imperial Majesty keeps his motivations to himself. Come in, Witcher. I wish you to feel at ease as this is an unofficial audience. You helped me in the mist, thus I surmise. You do not seek my death. Which leads me to ask, what you do seek here, Geralt of Rivian? Justice. A slippery thing, I'd say. It really depends on your point of view. So, you claim you did not kill Foltest. Do you know who did? A witcher named Letho. Do you know each other? I don't know. I have amnesia. Letho has suggested he knows something about me. It's possible we met before. There's an old kid when he's saying, a bitch will never bite another bitch. A hundred percent accurate where sorceresses are concerned. To the matter at hand, sire. Detanserville claims this Letho is in the area. Is that true? Yes. What does he want here? My head? He's hiding from Yorbit and his Scoia'tael. I don't know his plans. And you aim to get him? I do. Last question. Do you know who had Foltest and Demavend assassinated? Who's behind the Kingslayers? I don't know, but I'll find out when I find Letho. My spies have confirmed your words. I suppose I must believe you. Now to the other matter. The mist, the wraiths. All that magic shit holding off my campaign. My mages, as usual, have proved useless. They blather on about higher magic, delayed curses, and other hogwash, but nothing comes of it. This matter must be settled with a sword, a witcher's sword.
Will you manage this task? Yeah, I'll manage. Excellent. Lift the curse, and you'll learn the meaning of royal generosity. And even should you fail to catch this letter, I shall help you clear your name. Consider Deathmold at your disposal. He'll give you all the necessary information. Also, you are free to move about the camp and its environs from now on. Now, leave me alone. As we forged our way through the fog, you claimed it was Glevisig's curse. Sabrina Glevisig's. She was a sorceress, my former advisor. I ordered her bound to a wagon wheel and burned alive. While dying, she cursed me and my lineage. That was three years ago. The curse was cast three years ago. Any sign it's been active in the interim? Is that important? Sire, we're not talking about a fortune told in a tent on market day, nor about some curse cast by a novice mage. This curse caused a solar eclipse and summoned hordes of specters. We're dealing with a complex spell that operates at several levels. Uncommon knowledge and skill were required to cast it. Lifting it will be even more difficult. If I'm going to deal with it, I need you to cooperate. Ah, the plague. So be it. What did you condemn Sabrina for, sire? One year after the Peace of Sintra, I fought Demerven for Lormark. General Vandergrift commanded a part of my force. He forded the Pontar and joined battle on this field. It raged until evening when Sabrina Glevesig decided to take matters into her own hands. Fireballs rained down onto the battlefield. Three thousand men turned to bloody charred meat scraps. The fire consumed Kedwenis and Adernians alike. Knights boiled alive in their armor. Mad beasts howling with pain. War is for the honorable. When the likes of Glevesig enter the fray, it turns into hell. What drove Sabrina to attack her own army? Any specific reason? I've heard none, not even speculation. She was my advisor. A member of the Council of Mages. For years I was forced to tolerate her excesses, schemes, court scandals. Was she loyal? Ha! <laughs> Only to herself. Sire, do you remember the curse itself? What exactly did Sabrina say? All she said at the time has been fulfilled to some degree. A star adorned with a bloody braid will cut across the heavens. Square coins from maritime depths will beguile the hearts of fools. Coins? Deathmold found a few such coins among soldiers accused of treason. 